Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about bullying, and I want to talk about a piece of advice that was often given to me as a kid about how to deal with bullying. It was advice that I heard both from my parents and from other adults in my life. And that was to just ignore it when I was being bullied. I think that this piece of advice is really problematic for a variety of reasons. And I think one of the biggest reasons that it's problematic is that kids don't always know when they're being bullied and when they aren't. And I think even if you focus on a specific behavior, like if you had an impartial observer watching the kids, it's not always possible to classify a particular type of behavior as bullying. I think that there's a lot of gray area, and I think that there's a lot of subjectivity. Like, there's certain comments or remarks that one kid might make to another kid, and in one context, the kid might laugh, and actually it would be funny, and it would build this sort of connection between them. And then in another context, that kid might be really upset by it, and they might perceive it as a form of bullying. Some things are more uh, objectively bullying, but I think that there is a lot of subjectivity in it, and I think that there's some degree to which bullying is in the eye of the beholder, or the recipient of it. And this was something that I didn't understand as a kid. I think that kids have a tendency to see the world in a little bit more simple terms, and I certainly remember thinking of it this way as a kid. Like, I didn't really grasp the idea of my own narrative, or my own story, or my own interpretation of what was going around, on around me. Like, I was thinking of it as just like, oh, this kid's being mean to me, this kid's being nice, and so on. So I think that not realizing that, I would hear these comments that people would make. And I think that there were a lot of comments that were in that gray area. And I think that as a kid, for whatever reason, I developed the tendency to feel like I was being bullied a lot. Probably because I was in certain contexts. But I got to where I would perceive a broad range of behaviors as bullying. For example, I had had kids kind of taunt me by being really friendly to me, and then when I would start responding well to that, then they would say or do something mean. And so I think because of that, there were some contexts in which people would re uh, reach out to me genuinely, and I would assume that they were getting ready to bully me, or beginning to bully me, and I would just sort of close off from them. And so this advice of just ignoring it was kind of maladaptive, because if someone's being friendly to you, and then you ignore them, I think that that can lead them to feel bad about you. Like, I know if I were to try to talk to someone, and the person were to just completely ignore me, I'd probably feel pretty bad. And I think that one of the things that was going on as a kid is that I would react that way to other kids because of this advice that I had had kind of drilled into me by parents and other adults to ignore bullying. I sort of closed off from a lot of people because of that. Another thing that I don't like about this advice is that it doesn't teach kids how to process the information presented to them when people say mean things to them. So like, saying just ignore it, like, as a kid, I knew how to kind of ignore it on a level of my actions. Like, I knew how to choose not to speak or not to act in response to what someone else did. But I didn't feel like I had much control over my own thoughts or feelings. So someone might say something, and I might not respond to it, but the idea that they said might get into my consciousness, and start affecting my self-image, and my worldview, like my idea of how the world works. And I think that that's one of the ways in which bullying can be most damaging. Like, if a kid says to another kid something negative, like for example, kids might say things like, nobody likes you, nobody wants to be your friend, if a kid internalizes that, that can later lead to depression and social anxiety and other forms of mental disorder. So that thought pattern can get in the kid's head and shape their worldview in a negative way. So I think that just telling kids to ignore bullying isn't enough. 
Like I think we need to give kids tools to protect themselves from the influence of harmful ideas that might be presented to them in bullying contexts. So an example of how I would do this, say a kid comes to me and they're like, oh, this kid said something really mean to me, this kid's being really mean to me, I would try to first get the kid to give me specifics. So I would say, what did, what did the person say? And if the kid told me, oh, he or she said that no one likes me, and that I'm not going to have any friends, or something like that, I would try to reason the kid through what was said, and illustrate to the kid what is wrong with that logic, and that reasoning, and why it isn't true. So in that example, I would ask the kid, do you think that was a nice thing to say, or a mean thing to say? And I think it's pretty obvious that it's a mean thing to say. So you establish that. And then I would ask the kid, do you like people who say mean things to you, or do you like people who say nice things to you? And I think, again, the answer to that is pretty obvious. People like people who say nice things to them. They tend to like people who are nice to them more than they tend to like people who are mean to them. So then that's another thing you could establish. And so then you could say, ask the kid, if this person goes around saying mean things like that, do you think that people are going to like them a lot? And it's just getting the wheels churning in the kid's head. They might not connect all the pieces of the puzzle immediately, but I think the goal would be to show the kid that the person who is saying that no one likes them isn't an authoritative source on that topic. Like, they're, they're not in the position to say no one likes you because they're going around saying mean things. And in all likelihood, it's probably more true that they're the one who's struggling with not having friends, or with people not liking them. So they're saying this thing that's really untrue. And I think that helping kids to see that at an earlier age can help protect them from falling into these sorts of mental disorders later in life, which happen when you internalize some of these negative and untruthful ideas about yourself. I think the goal would be to help the kid to prevent those negative ideas from being part of their self-image, or their identity. So this is just one of many approaches that I take. I obviously have a lot more to say about this topic, but uh, I think that it would be really useful if we could start approaching bullying in a way a little bit more like this. So basically, don't just tell kids to ignore it, but instead to emphasize to kids that there is sometimes a gray area, and it's not necessary to assume that someone's always bullying you. They might just be joking around. Maybe they're just repeating something that they heard someone else say, and maybe it comes across as really mean, but they didn't intend it that way. I know because I've done that kind of thing a lot as a kid. I've said some things that I later realized came across in pretty nasty ways, just because I was repeating something that I heard someone else say, and I hadn't really thought about the way it would be received. So that's another thing to emphasize. And then lastly, I think it's really important to teach kids how to process the information when they actually are being bullied. Like when people say really mean things to them, really negative things to them, I think it's important to show them how to hash those things out, how to reason through them, and see that they're untruthful. See that the things being said about them don't really reflect them as a person, and don't reflect their life, and their future, and their self, and all that. So uh, that's what I have to say right now. I'd love to hear from you. If you have anything to add, any comments, please share. Uh, and as always, I love when people share my videos, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you!